because of the Remembrance Day that's right around the corner, folks, I just want to bring a short message departing from our study in Exodus. And just a, just a quick word from the Lord. And I pray you will continue to, if you are not able to attend physically, you will continue to use the, the technology that the, the Lord has provided for us to continue hearing the word and being encouraged by the word. Uh, I've entitled my message uh, this morning and just a simple title, Faithfulness. Faithfulness. But I want to take it from a very um, obscure passage of the Bible, um, obscure in a sense about uh, thinking about Remembrance Day service. And I want to remind uh, each one of us, brothers and sisters in the Lord, that we too are in a war. And many of you are veterans. If you've been a believer even for one day, you're a veteran because we are at war. This world does not belong to us. The prince of the power of the air rules this world and he's at war with us. He's at war with Christ's church. He's at war with every Christian. And I want to take that uh, mind and that idea uh, and want to look in God's word and see what does God's word say to us? And also to help us remember the men and women uh, who left our safe shores and went and gave of themselves in serving our country so that we would live in freedom and in peace. Even though it is very uh, fragile peace, but God has been good to us. So with that, let me just um, bring the message to you. And the uh, focus on my uh, uh, concentration of some scriptures is going to be 2 Timothy chapter 2, verses 1 to 26. 2 Timothy 2, 1 to 26. See, the Bible speaks about the just living by faith. In Habakkuk 2, 4, uh, it's very clear. It begins with uh, Habakkuk chapter 2, verse 4. Behold, his soul is puffed up but it's not upright within him. And then the writer puts this uh, phrase behind that, those words. He said, but the righteous, but the righteous shall live by his faith. But the righteous shall live by his faith. Um, in Matthew 25, 21, and Matthew 25, remember the story of uh, Jesus gives us a parable that the master is going away and he gives talents to his servants. And what he wants them to do with the talents he gives them, to use it, uh, to either increase it, uh, whatever way. And you know, the servants, uh, those that are faithful, will go out and use what the master has given them. In other words, they're going to build it up. They're going to invest it. And they're going to bring a good return. Our Lord and Master wants us as Christians to bring good return in our walk with Him. How do we bring a good return to God? By being faithful and doing what He's called us to do. And He's the one that will bless the return. So Matthew 25 verses 21 uh, to 23. I just want to read this uh, a couple of verses uh, before we look into 2 Timothy chapter 2. Listen to what uh, the writer uh, Matthew writes. He's giving us the parable. And this is Jesus talking, Matthew 25, verse 21. His master said to him, Well done, and well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful over a little. I will set over you much. Enter into the joy of your master. You have been faithful over a little. I will set you over much. Enter into the joy of your master. Verse 22. And he also, who had two talents, came forward, saying, Master, you delivered to me two talents. Here I've made two more talents. Verse 23, his master said to him, Well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful over a little. I will set you over much. Enter into the joy of your master. There's so much in those verses. I'm just emphasizing how the master will say to those who have gone out 
applied themselves, have come back with a good return, and the master says, well done, good and faithful servant. Well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful over a little, and I will set over you, uh, or you over much. Enter into the joy of your master. Now that's, in that same parable, there was one of the servants, he, you know, he went and hid whatever his master had given him, and the master showed up, he said, I know you're a hard man, and you'll take where you've not a sword, so I kept your, what you gave me, I kept it safe, safe and now here it is. The master said, at least you could have invested this, that would have brought me some return. You know, when I thought about Remembrance Day, and I have really uh, been um, delving myself into uh, World War I, World War II, and uh, all the wars that's taking around us, and I just uh, see a lot of documentaries, and I'm trying to learn uh, what motivated uh, some young men, they were below the age, but they lied to get in there, and they went out in the fields of mud and carnage, and many of them never came back home, and uh, many of them just gave their lives, but in return, they became a wall to protect us. Nothing, uh, nothing good comes without a great price, people. And here I want to take uh, Second Timothy chapter two, verses one to twenty-six, and see what Paul is going to say to um, his uh, uh, trainee uh, Timothy, whom he had worked with and trained, so Timothy could go out and fulfill the ministry where Paul was not able to. So here we come to this uh, chapter, Second Timothy chapter two, verses one to twenty-six. And first thing I want to begin with is faithful in service. Faithful in service, verses 1 to 7. And then faithful in suffering, verses 8 to 13. And then faithful in standards, uh, which is becoming quite a deal nowadays. And then fourthly, faithful in showing, verses 20 to 26. So just a quick devotional to purge our mind and help us to be focused during this Remembrance Day and focused on our God and uh, the world around us. Faithful in service. Listen to what Paul will write to Timothy. He says, and it's interesting the way uh, he says, he says, you then, my child, be strengthened by the grace that is in Christ Jesus. Be strengthened by the grace that is in Christ Jesus. Remember, Paul will write, by grace you have been saved, not that of your own strength and ability. But God in his great mercy and grace redeems us. He says, you then, my child, be strengthened by the grace that is in Christ Jesus. And what you have heard from me in the presence of many witnesses and trust to faithful men who will be able to teach others also. Faithful men who will be able to teach others. And then verse 3 Share in the suffering as a good soldier of Christ Jesus. No soldier gets entangled in civilian pursuits since his aim is to please the one who enlisted him. An athlete is not crowned unless he competes according to the rules. It is the hard-working farmer who ought to have the first share of the crops. Think over what I say, for the Lord will give you understanding in everything. First, faithful in service. Timothy was a young man, and yet Paul trained him, taught him. And then Paul says, now you go, and you get faithful men, and entrust this ministry, the gospel, to faithful men. Men who are able to teach others. Now here, it's very interesting, when I looked at the concept of teach, uh, didaskalos, the word to teach, um, it's very interesting to understand something about teaching. You can teach in a variety of ways. You can teach people by lifestyle choices that you make. That means you can teach by example. Or you can teach using words. 
So there are a lot of ways to teach somebody. Here, Paul is saying to Timothy, first, you then, my child, be strengthened by the grace that is in Christ Jesus. That means, Timothy, don't go in your own strength, in your own power, but the grace of God that enables you, that strengthens you, that gives you wisdom, you go in that power. The power that is that comes from Christ Jesus. Remember what our Master and uh, Savior said to us when he gave the commission to, to the apostles. He said, all power has been given to me in heaven and on earth. And then he said, go. Go. Starting from Jerusalem to the uttermost parts of the world. So he gave them his power. So in their going, it was not their strength, it was not their wisdom, but it's the wisdom that comes from above and in the strength that God enabled them. With weak bodies they went forth and look how they conquered the known world at that time. So Paul goes on to say, you then my child be strengthened by the grace that is in Christ Jesus. So first, Timothy, embrace the truth. Hold on to the truth. Know the truth. Live out the truth. And then he says, and what you've heard from in the presence of many witnesses, so this was not done in privacy. This was not Paul's own philosophy that he gave to Timothy. This was God's truth he dispensed to Timothy, and he says, I did it in the witnesses of many people. So there were others who heard this very same truth, but Timothy was chosen now to be an ambassador. He says in the presence of many witnesses, now entrust this very truth to faithful men who will be able to teach others also. And then he doesn't stop there. You think, okay, that's that's great uh, word, uh, Paul, to Timothy. And Timothy, you should just go out there and his power all the way through. But listen to what Paul is going to say. Share in suffering as a good soldier of Christ Jesus. Share in the suffering as a good soldier of Christ Jesus. From what I hear, that once you have enlisted, you go through the boot camp and you've been trained, and they send you out in the field, and it's real wartime. If you turn around and you run back, you are a deserter. And the punishment for deserters have always been harsh. Listen to what Paul is preparing young Timothy to do. He said, share in suffering as a good soldier of Christ Jesus. So many a times you find we start well in the Christian life and we are excited and we want to witness to the whole world and we go about carrying our Bible and we are diligent in reading the Bible. And then I don't know what happens before the real battle starts. I find people slowly keeping their Bible down and they start disappearing from churches. They start disappearing from Christian fellowship. They start disappearing even from their own devotional time with God. And before you know, they have completely deserted and run away. Why would Paul say this to Timothy so quickly because the life of a Christian is not all fun and games. It's not happy, happy, happy here and then you get to heaven and then you live happy, happy, happy ever after. Jesus said, in this world you will have tribulation. That means suffering. And then he goes and says, but be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. So you see, if you're going to be faithful in service, you've got to buy the whole package. 